All right, everybody, welcome back to Work and Energy. Today, we are talking about work, non-conserved, pretty much combining what we learned with uh, mechanical energy conserved with the work that we learned. All right, here we go. So when, we're, when we talked about mechanical energy conserved and when we were doing problems like that, what we should have only been doing is we were working with forces dealing with gravity and springs. Those are the only forces we were dealing with. When we talk about work not conserved, we're going to start introducing other forces. So this is when we introduce other forces like friction, air resistance, even some kind of applied force. So whenever we're dealing with other kind of forces, we're going to use work not conserved. A lot of times it's mostly going to be like friction or air resistance. All right, so let's look at this first problem. A mass of 0.1 kilograms is attached to a spring with a spring constant 20 newton per meter. The spring is unstretched and the mass is moving 1.5 meters per second to the right. Find the maximum distance d that the glider moves if there is no friction. So at the beginning, it's just a simple mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final problem. At the very beginning, it's moving, so there's kinetic energy. And then at the very end, it's stretched out a certain distance. We're going to call it d, the maximum distance d. Uh, so that's going to give us elastic potential energy. So then what we have is 1 half mass, 0.1, v squared, 1.5 squared is equal to 1 half k, which is 20 times d squared. And now let's figure out what d is doing some math. 1.5 squared times 0.1 times 0.5 times root divided by 20 square root. And we get around 0 0.106 meters, okay? 0 0.106 meters. Now let's look at part B. So part B is saying if the coefficient of friction is 0 0.47. So now there's some friction involved. So that means there is going to be a conservative uh, work, conservative force. So we're going to do mechanical energy initial plus work non-conserved equals mechanical energy final. And I want you guys to think, if there's friction now involved over here, is this going to go as far or not as far? You know, let's find out. Mechanical energy at the beginning, again, just kinetic energy. But as it slides now, there's going to be a work of friction that's happening. This is going to be equal to the mechanical energy final, again, at the maximum distance d, which is all elastic potential energy. So we have 1 half mv squared plus work of friction, which is force of friction times the displacement. I'm going to call that d because that's how far the there's going to be friction on it times cosine of 180, because force of friction is going in the opposite direction of the motion, which is equal to 1 half kx squared. So let's write all this down. 1 half mass 0.1, velocity 1.5 squared, force of friction, this is going to be the normal force, which is 0.1 times 10, so 1, the coefficient of friction, which is 0.47, and a cosine of 180, which is negative 1, is equal to 1 half k, which is 20, uh, and then we have this d squared. Oops, I forgot uh, this, this, this d over here. So there should be a d right there. Now let's simplify this a little bit better. 1.5 squared times 0.1 times 0.5. And we see that this is going to be equal to 0.1125. This is going to be minus 0.47d. And this is going to be equal to 10d squared. What you guys should notice at this point is, oh, this is a quadratic formula. This is going to be set up as 0 is equal to negative 5d squared minus 0.47d plus 0.1125. And now let's figure out this quadratic formula. So we have negative b plus or minus uh, b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a negative b, this, so this is just going to be 0.47, uh, plus or minus, I'm going to do 0.47 squared, which is going to be 0 0.22, 0 0.22, minus 4, times a, which is going to be 0.1125, times c, which is going to be uh, equal to, oh, no, sorry, a is negative 5 and C is 0.125. Okay, so this is negative 5. Da, 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 divided by 2A. So 2, negative 5. 
All right, so let's see what this simplifies to. So I'm going to do 0.47, and let's figure out what's in the all the bottom. 0.22 plus 4 times 5 times 0.1125 plus 0.1125 plus 4 times 5 times 0.1125 square root of that, and we get 1.57. Okay, and sorry, I put um, oops, I put a uh, negative five here, but that should actually be negative. I don't know where I got that 5 from. And then over here, this should be negative 10 as well. Okay. And then, so this is going to be divided by negative 20. And let's see what we get for D. I'm going to do 0.47 minus 1.57 divided by 20. And then I get negative 0 0.06 meters. Or not negative, 0 0.06. All right, uh, moving on. I hope you guys weren't confused by, I know it's a bit of a hard problem kicking off, but let's continue. All right, so a 2.5 kilogram block is sliding on a rough surface. Mm -hmm. uh, has a speed of 1.2 meters per second when it comes in contact with the spring. The block comes to rest when it compresses 0.05 meters. The work done by friction from the time the block hits the spring until the block stops is negative 0.5 joules. What is the spring constant of the spring? Okay, so let's look at this again. Mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. At the very beginning, the block is moving, so it has kinetic energy. While it's moving, there's going to be a friction acting on it, so the work of friction. And then at the end, it's going to come to a stop, so the work done by friction Compression the swing of 0 0.5, 0 0.05 minutes when it comes to rest. So then it's all elastic potential energy. So let's write this down. 1 half mass 2.5 V squared 1.2 squared plus force of friction. So it's going to be the mass times gravity. So that's going to give us normal force 25. Uh, oh, wait. Actually, they already give us uh, the work done by friction. Work done by friction from the time it's thing is negative 0.5. So the work of friction is given to us. Negative 0.5. Okay. And then this is going to be equal to 1 half K, which we're looking for, and then X squared, which is 0 0.05 squared. So let's figure out what this K is. Okay. 1.2 squared times 2.5 times 0.5 minus 0.5 uh, times 2. Divided by 0 0.05 squared, and we get around 1040 Newton per meter. Okay. Oh, okay. What is the coefficient of friction between the two surfaces? Okay, so part B, we're looking for what the coefficient of friction is. So we should know work of friction is going to equal the force of friction times displacement times cosine of theta. Work of friction is negative 0.5. Force of friction is going to be the normal force, which again is 2.5 or 25. Coefficient of friction, which we're looking for, times displacement, it gets moved 0 0.05 meters, uh, times cosine of 180. And now let's figure out what this mu k is. Okay, let's figure this out. 0.5 divided by 25 divided by 0 0.05. And what we get is 0 0.4. All right. Okay, moving on. A worker slides a 12 kilogram crate up a 2.5 meter ramp inclined at 30 degrees. If the worker pushes the crate up with the initial speed of 5 meters per second at the bottom and the crate only goes up 1.6 meters and slides back down, find the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the crate. Okay, so we're looking for the a uh, force of friction. So let's look at this. Mm -mm -mm. So this goes up 1.6 meters, which means this is 0 0.8 meters, the height. So let's look at A. So we're going to do uh, mechanical energy initial uh, is equal to, oh, plus work non-conserved because there's friction, is equal to mechanical energy final. So we have at the very beginning, we have kinetic energy because it's moving, right? Uh, 1.6 meters per second. So we have kinetic energy plus the work done by friction, which is the work not conserved. And then at the very end, when it comes to this height of 0.8, we have potential gravitational potential energy. So let's write this out. 1 half m, which is 12, v, which is 5 squared, 
plus the force of friction times the displacement, well, it moves 1.6 meters, times cosine of 180, because friction is always opposing the motion, is equal to mass, uh, which is 12, gravity, which is 10, and the height, which is 0.8. And now we can figure out what the force of friction is doing a lot of math. Well, not a lot, but a few math. 5 squared times 12 times 0.5. And then I'm going to subtract from the other side. Minus 12 times 10 times 0.8. Divide by 1.6. And then we find that the force of friction is going to be equal to 33.75 joules. Uh, Newton. Okay, so part B is how fast is the crane moving when it reaches the bottom of the ramp? So that's a good question. So let's look at that. So that's going to be a little bit different. Now we're going to look when it's up there and then going down. So part B, we're going to do mechanical energy initial. So that's when it's up here and then it goes back down. So similar kind of problem plus the work non-conserved is equal to mechanical energy final. So at the very beginning, uh, at the top, the highest point, the velocity is zero, so it's going to be all gravitational potential energy. Then the work not conserved is going to be the work done by friction. And then this is going to be equal to the mechanical energy final, which is going to be all kinetic energy at the bottom. So we have mass 12, gravity 10, and it has a height of 0.8 meters, plus the work of friction, which is going to be the force of friction, which is the same, 33.75 the distance, which it covers, is 1.6 meters, 1.6, uh, times cosine of 180, because it's opposing the motion. And this is going to equal 1 half m, which is 12, v squared. And the velocity won't be as much as 5 meters per second, because the work done by friction is going to be taking away some of the energy. Uh, so just know that. Okay? Uh, 33.5 times 1.6. And then we should get a velocity of 2.65 meters per second. Okay. Around there. All right, guys. Okay, let's look at this example.